this is Adam from Edge. I'm here with Jeremy Chapman. How are you doing, Jeremy? Great. How are you, Adam? I'm good. So tell us what you work on. My name is Jeremy Chapman. I'm a senior product manager on the enterprise client product management team. And we're working on Windows 7 now, and I'm responsible for deployment and application compatibility technologies. Okay. What are some of the features then that are in Windows 7 to help us out with that? So we've done a lot to take our foundation that we built for Windows Vista in terms of offline servicing of images using WIM files, non-destructive imaging, really expand that and make it better, faster, stronger than it was inside of Windows Vista. Okay. So what we're, what we're doing is, with, within the imaging uh, standpoint, we've got tools to create images um, and maintain those images with one combined tool set called DISM.exe that does everything from mounting your images to enumerating the features and packages to servicing those, updating all the components. It can service now both WIM and VHD files. So we've got a lot of flexibility um, and a lot of, a lot of functionality that was spread across multiple tools within Windows Vista. Okay, and that's the key, right? We used to have a few different tools, a few different scripts we had to use. Now we can use this one utility. Yeah, and it also expands the capabilities of those utilities all up as well. So now we've got the ability, for example, to add and remove drivers. We've got the ability to enumerate the features, the, com the, um, the packages, the drivers on the OS WIMs and VHDs. So you got a lot more functionality within DISM than you even had in Windows Vista. Okay. Great. So with DISM, by the way, DISM stands for Deployment Image Servicing and Management. As I said, you can do what you were doing before with ImageX in terms of mounting and unmounting images. Now, the great thing with DISM, too, is if you want to, um, if a lot of times you would be editing an image and you wouldn't know whether or not you wanted to commit or discard the changes. And if you didn't hit the commit uh, switch within ImageX, it may not have actually committed those changes to the image. So with DISM, we've actually hard-coded it so that we'll ask you after you're done maintaining your images whether or not you want to commit or discard the changes. So let's take a look at some of the commands within DISM. So first we can mount and unmount uh, images as we did in ImageX, and we can, we can um, view all the components in the image and edit those. So I've written a simple batch file here that will show DISM, it will show DISM mounting an image, and it will show DISM mounting a VHD file. So I'm going to mount first, I'm going to mount actually a VHD file here and show what that looks like using disk part. And the disk part um, commands that we're going to use are actually a command called attach vdisk after we select the virtual disk. So we've already got a VHD on this machine. What we're going to do now is just attach that as a, so it looks like a local drive so we can change files or add files to it. Yeah, so this, this machine has been set up for VHD native boot. Um, it has the VHD file it had been sysprepped and generalized. It's gone through setup. It's fully installed on this machine as if it were um, a WIM file, essentially with full uh, with full access to all of the hardware resources. So when I do the attach VDisk, what I'll see is it will fire actually the the autoplay as if I've as if I've uh, mounted say a, um, a USB external hard drive. I can go in and take a look, and I've got all of my OS files here. So I've actually, I've got everything um, mounted up, and it looks like I've got 25 gigs of space assigned to, to this disk, local disk F, which is the native boot into VHD operating system. Cool. So tell us a little bit more about, about uh, boot from VHD. This is a new feature, right? This is brand new, so basically it gives you the ability um, to do multiple boot scenarios. So you can, you can boot into as many VHD files as, as, as you have space for on the disk. I mean, there's going to be a, a, probably a limit in number, um, but it gives you the ability to go beyond dual, triple, quadruple boot, and you can boot in, especially on the server side, when you've got multiple server roles in the same machine, you can boot into those just by rebooting, and it has full access to um, full access to the hardware with no performance degradation uh, compared to booting natively from a WIM file. So let's show quickly what kind of what the changes look like inside of um, inside of BCD. All right, so now I've detached uh, the the VHD file. I'm just going to show what that looks like in BCD edit. So I'll run a command prompt. go, BCD edit, and I've got 
the system uh, set up to point to uh, the VHD file located on the C drive in the VHD folder, and it will boot into, into this file. So do you want to see what it looks like booting into the uh, VHD file, Adam? Yeah, so just to explain what we've got here then. So the first one that we see there, that's the native install of, of right the 7 that we've got booted. But then the second one is showing, uh, this is actually a VHD file that we can also boot from the, the boot menu. So, so yeah, let's take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so when we when we restart the machine, it's just going to look like it does in any dual boot scenario. But instead of dual booting into a separately installed OS on another partition, for example, we're able to just boot into that VHD file. So there's no there's no real limitation in terms of uh, you know having having two or three or four different operating systems on this on this machine. It really depends on how much disk space you're willing to allocate to those VHD files. Okay, so now I have to move to this one. All right, so now I've got two different boot options, like in a dual boot scenario. I've got my Windows 7 uh, natively installed OS via the WIM, and I've got my VHD native boot, which is actually booting into uh, that drive off of C uh, VHD x86 ultimate.vhd. And when we boot into it, it looks, looks and feels just like we're booting into a natively installed operating system. So just a, a couple words here in terms of limitations of uh, native boot into VHD. It is definitely uh, designed for non-mobile scenarios. So there are no, there is no support for um, hibernation, for example, and BitLocker in, in the enterprise uh, scenario is also not supported in VHD native boot. So it's really intended for uh, computers that are stationary that don't require BitLocker that don't need to hibernate or use any of the advanced power management that you might need on a laptop. Okay, so now we're actually inside, we're not in a black screen, we're actually inside the, uh, the natively booted VHD. Let's have, have a quick look again at um, our computer to see what, see what um, happened here on the, on the hard disk. And we've got now, as our, as our primary drive now, the D partition is, is set up. It's given us a default allocation of 25 gigs. Uh, the C drive is, is still active as well. So we can actually view we can view items from the C drive from within that virtual session. Um, if we go into if we go into BCD edit, we'll actually see um, we'll see that the configuration has changed. Now it'd be the same if we did that when it was attached uh, within within disk part. We're going to run BCD edit and we'll see that the way that the um, the way that bootloader has this this entered as it's now booting into partition D uh, Windows System 32 winload.exe so it's actually changed uh, how that's that's being rendered within within the bootloader gotcha. okay great cool all right now these features they're in the beta now people can can start taking a look and, and play with this functionality in the beta today right yeah, so everything right now, um, we've, got, we've got support of, of this VHD booting. We've got support of all of the DISM tools now within Windows 7. We've also got the Windows Automated Installation Kit version 2 up on the web for downloads. In the Download Center, if you do a search for Windows AIK or Wake, you'll be able to find a uh, Windows Automated Installation Kit that has DISM in it, as well as other features around uh, user state migration tool, for example, is now part of, of the Wake. Um, and you'll see other guidance for doing deployment scenarios. We've also got ancillary to that, uh